So I've had the Two Rock Vintage Deluxe with me for a couple of weeks now and um, it's still on loan from Coda. I haven't decided whether I'm buying it or not. And I've still got a few videos that I want to do, uh, which are yesterday I managed to play a 6L6 version next to this 6V6. So I've got a video coming about that. Then I want to compare it to my classic reverb and then finally I want to compare it to a couple of other amp choices that I was looking at. So that's three videos and I've got the amp for about another eight days before I potentially give it back. But at this point, I wanted to just summarize my thoughts about the amp. And um, to be honest, um, I probably never heard from other people so many mixed responses to this amp. And uh, it's also left me a little bit, you know, not confused, maybe not the right word, but it's certainly, you know, left me thinking about some things. So uh, yeah, let's have a, have a look. So all the playing in this video is on my Collings uh, 35, I35, L35, what do they call it? Uh, that one. It's the, the vintage one, which means it's got lacquer checking and a few other things. But anyway, that's not the important part of this video. But I did have a lot of fun on that guitar just now. And I was using a pedal, which I think is the first time I'm really using a pedal for this amp. And that's the Vemuram Shanks. I wanted to get a bit more gain and see how it felt. And it felt really good. I've got to be honest. <laughs> So I wondered if it was the name that was actually giving people a lot of confusion about this amp. I've had some people tell me that it almost doesn't feel too rocky enough because it's too vintage sounding. And then I've had some people tell me they didn't think it was vintage feeling enough. And another complication that plays into that is some people have been playing the 6L6 version and some people have been playing the 6V6 version. To be honest with you, the 6L6 version sounds and plays a bit more like the too rocky sound but having said that, if you've had any of the big, uh, you know, norm, well, the more standard amps, should we say, like the classic reverb, if you've had that as a 40 watt, it might remind you of the 6V6. I had the 40 watt classic reverb for a long time and it broke up in a similar way. But my 6L6 classic reverb feels more like the 6L6 vintage deluxe. So it depends on, you know, where you're coming from, what background you've got, which Fender amps do you like? when it comes to the sort of vintage ones. Do you like the smaller 6v6 ones or the bigger 6l6 ones? And everyone has a different sort of concept of what they think. And I think giving it such a generalized name like that has probably caused a little bit of confusion. On top of that, releasing both of those amps at the same time, you know, with the, the big amps, Classic Reverb, the Bloomfield Drive, the TS1 and so on, there's a 100 watt version and there's a 40 watt version. It's a big, sounds like a big difference. Even if in reality, the volume isn't always as different as you think, but the amps are quite different in that respect. And so it's easier to make your mind up, even though I would still say one of the more common questions I get is, I'm buying a two rock, which size do you think I should get? Because I've had both sizes a couple of times. So I think some of the confusion could have been avoided uh, here. Now, in my heart of hearts, I'd say the 6V6 version is my definitive version of this amp. 
having played for a couple of hours yesterday with both next to each other. But I'll get more into that in the video about that. And Deluxe, well, obviously refers to, you know, like a Fender Deluxe Reverb, which is a 22 watt amp with six V6s. And I think it breaks up more like the six V6 version of this amp. So yeah, is this just a Deluxe on steroids? <laughs> Is this just a deluxe on steroids? I mean, sort of, but not really, because A, you've got twice as much power, B, you've got a master volume, C, you've got, you know, all the sort of switches that you can dial stuff in with. Um, it's overall, like I've had a couple of people say, this doesn't sound any better than my deluxe. Maybe it doesn't, right? Maybe you play better than me, or maybe if you were in the room here, you'd feel this and go, woof, Okay, I mean, this cabinet is quite a lot bigger than a Deluxe's cabinet. And to me, it feels more impressive in the room than a Deluxe. But at the same time, does it really matter? This amp costs twice as much as the hand-wired current Deluxe, four times as much as the non-hand-wired one. It's about the same as a good vintage one. What would you rather have? I think that's a decision for you to make. So it's definitely stirred up some things. I'm not writing this amp off at all. I think I've got, it's a brand new thing on the market. So everyone I'm talking to who's either tried one in a shop or has actually bought one and got it at home is in that mode of trying to get used to it. What does this thing do? Like you need someone to help. Uh, I'm talking about each of us. Like I've been chatting to people who own one, they've been chatting to me, we've all been, they've all been figuring it out. I know some people who've had it, who had it for a very short amount of time and it just wasn't what they expected. So they sent it back and got a different two rock. I've had people who <clears throat> um, have tried it in the shop and just aren't sure what it's there for in their context. And I'd say, because maybe it doesn't hit the normal two rock crowd. So we're also not seeing it yet in the hands of all the pro players and I'm sure we will and we've seen a couple of people but you know you want to hear this amp at its best and that will maybe maybe help you aim for a sound that you're looking for with it which is what we do you know often what happens with the other amps you know you hear Joey Landreth or um, Matt Schofield or whoever playing it and then you aim for that sound because you think it sounds great with this one people aren't sure personally I want to take this amp as its own thing and give it a chance but Am I going to keep it? I don't know. If I don't keep it, it's not because I've written it off. I may well come back to it at a future time um, because I'm looking for my one sort of smaller combo amp to have to take around with me. Is it the one? That's still to come next week. <laughs> So 
So I think this amp uh, actually does really well with humbuckers and with single cores and P90s. I played yesterday with a couple of humbucker guitars uh, and with um, some single coil guitars. And the amp actually worked really well. It worked great for P90s. I find P90s are the most sort of chameleon-like of those pickups, you know, when you want them to be like a strat, they're stratty, and when you want to make them bark, they bark, you know, so the amp works really well for that. I've had a couple of people asking me for clean sounds. I've got to say, I don't think these amps are that great for clean sounds, really. What does that mean? They sound fine. They sound good. I mean, in a way, they sound, they're less neutral than the other two rock amps, mainly. But maybe I'm just not a clean amp person. I need that. Um, so I'm maybe not the best person to judge. You know, I don't play cleaner styles. I don't play the most gain, obviously, either. I mean, today I've got this guitar and this pedal set up for what is, for me, is about the highest gain I would ever do. It sounds fantastic with this amp. Works really well. I love the speed I'm getting out of the amp, which, if you don't know what I'm talking about, because maybe you've not played loads of different amps, there is a definite difference in speed between amps. It's a bizarre thing, but I often think that's what people say when, when they're saying, I'm not getting on with this one, or it feels a bit stiff, or whatever it is. It's, part of that is a speed thing, as well as the type of gain that it's got and everything. Uh, this 6v6 version is really fast, which I love. In a way, it's making me play, I mean, I can't say I play too fast, I don't play that fast, but maybe I'm throwing in extra notes because it's so addictive to the feeling of it. So it has got a great feel to it. Um, it does the, the sort of Jimi Hendrix single coil thing, and it can also, as you can hear here, do this. So I think it's it works great for both. And I mean, all their amps work great for both. I generally have found an amp might work better for one or the other. I prefer I preferred the Bloomfield Drive, I think, with humbuckers, and I prefer the classic reverb with single coils. Or should I say they excelled in those areas? I still like them with the other pickups. But anyway, that's a question I often get asked. <laughs> Is the amp missing anything? Um, that's a good question because um, I always think of these things as this is someone's design, they designed it to do exactly what it does and therefore you can't really say it's missing anything because well, it's not in the design of this amp. Not every amp can do everything, otherwise we would just all have the same amp that did the same thing. So is it missing something? Hmm. Somehow it does feel like it's missing something. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not. Um, that, I think my confusion tells you enough about that. Is the amp living up to its what I wanted it to and what you wanted it to. I'm not 100% sure. That is a little bit of a difficult one to answer. So I'm still thinking about it. What's great about this amp? Well, look, the touch and the feel and the speed and the dynamics are like any other two rock amp. So great. It's more alive than some of the two rock amps I've played. For example, I can't get along with a traditional clean. And I found the clean channel of the Bloomfield Drive had some great things about it, but I also found it a little bit difficult. The TS1 clean was sort of stiff and difficult. This is easier than all of those and nicer to play in my opinion. So I really, really like that. That's great about it. Um, the reverb has a nice flexibility to it. You can have it really tight because there's a reverb thing on the back where you can, you can change it and you can make it a bit looser and bigger. The 6V6's reverb one is different from the 6L6 one. Um, and I'm not sure why that is, but the 6V6's reverb felt a bit more springy and alive to me than the one in the 6L6. Um, the texture switch is really great. I enjoy that a lot. The tone stack thing, I think, is for occasional use for a boost. It works pretty well. The fact that you've got the tone stack bypass and you can then change the EQ of that on the back, great. I'm not always sure why they put things on the back that could just be on the front because just make the amp a little bit bigger and put it on the front. <laughs> but um, it is what it is. But actually it's probably more useful than the bypass in any of the other two rocks because you can actually affect the EQ of it while it's bypassed. So that's pretty wicked actually. I hadn't really thought of it that way. Um, it's sort of, it's sort of great really. I'm just, have I got a sound out of it that's better than the best sound I ever got out of my vintage Vibralux, which is the closest I can think of, even though that's 6L6. 
possibly not. The cleans were that on that were bigger and but then that was more comparable to the 6L6 version of this amp. Do you see where this is going? It's very confusing, isn't it? The fact they released two similar amps at the same time with the same name. The tremolo's brilliant. I love the tremolo on this amp. Hmm. Part of me wants to say, to spend this much money on an amp, it should just be an instant yes. Like that 100 watt classic reverb signature there, instant yes. This one, hmm. And I lived with the Bloomfield Drive like that for like a year and a half before I sold it. Hmm. The TS1, I was like, hmm. And, and I think ultimately what it is, is there is a two rock that suits most players on this half of the gain world, let's say. You know, it's not going to be a Soldano, is it? But for me, the classic reverb is my main, is the sound I love. Compared to the TS1, people have asked me why I sold the TS1. It was, it was just a difficult amp for me in the end. It had some amazing sounds in it, but I'm just not a Dumble Overdrive special type of player. It's very revealing, not loose enough for me. So yeah. But I'm thinking the Vintage Deluxe is the closest I've got to wanting a second two rock in a way compared to the Bloomfield Drive, the TS1, the Joey Landreth signature that I had. Because it gives me, that, that 100 watt classic reverb there gives me just massive sound and a lot of clean, but clean with character and a certain type of breakup. But I'm thinking I might prefer the breakup on the little Vintage Deluxe instead. So between the two, do I, I have my perfect pairing of amps really, which is what I'm looking for. Yeah. So look, I'm not trying to feed the confusion, but I always, as usual on my channel, just demonstrate what I'm thinking and feeling because it might validate what you're thinking and feeling, or if you're thinking about buying this amp, you need to try one. And don't just pick 6L6 or 6V6 at random, really think about why. Yeah. Anyway, that video should come out hopefully at the weekend. It's a bit of an editing job, that one. The one with comparing the two amps. And I didn't have that long and it's not gonna be as structured as some of my amp comparison videos because I only had, you know, a viewer who watches the channel kindly brought that over, which is amazing, thank you, Andy. But I, I can't do the exact comparisons. So it's more of a loose thing, but I got to play it enough to be able to tell you what I think more in detail. Anyway, over to the Collings and the Shanks more. Bloody hell, this guitar is fantastic. I thought I've maybe been trying to play 335s too clean and I was watching um, Joe Bonamassa chatting with Rick Beato, which came out yesterday. And I know he's playing a Les Paul in that, but I just thought he plays with a lot more saturation than I remember, um, Joe Bonamassa. So I thought I'd just try and di dial the gain up a little bit and use the Collings and man, that, yeah, I had a bit of a guitar gasm to be honest. So I think you might be hearing more of a bit more gain, like the sort of gain you just heard and I wanna play around with that more. I was gonna compare the Jan Ray and the Shanks for that, that's a question I get a lot of the time. So if you want that video, the Jan Ray versus Shanks now, I think I've done it once before, a couple of years ago, but to be honest, I think I'm probably better at comparing stuff now and better at playing them, to be honest, so it might be more worthwhile. But um, yeah, well let's keep going with the Vintage Deluxe. It is a brilliant amp. Would I take it over the classic reverb? I wouldn't wouldn't take it over the classic reverb. Would I take it next to the classic reverb? They do do different things enough. Yes, they probably do. But why wouldn't I have something else that has no two rock DNA in any of its sound? That's what we're gonna answer when I compare it to two other amps. So we will get there next week. Anyway, enough of that. Thank you for watching. Let me know what questions you've got down below. And uh, yeah, I'll keep working on it. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.